Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and welcome to the first episode of my beginner's guide to wood carving. Now, I thought I'd kick us off with knife selection. Um, seems pretty sensible, bearing in mind that's going to be our main tool for what we're trying to do. Um, and I've got a little selection here. Um, you would have seen almost all of these before on my channel. Um, and really, you know, these are what I consider to be kind of the the slightly lower end budget option, um, still really, really good carving knives, but you know, aimed more at beginners um, or people on a budget, or, or certainly people who don't want to spend out too much money until they know whether or not carving is for them. Um, and what I think I'll do, I'm going to bring the camera just a little bit closer in and I'll show you what it is I've got. Right then guys, so I have got five options to look at here. Um, two of them are what I would class as dedicated carving knives. Two of them are what I would class as maybe kind of bushcraft carving crossovers. Um, and one of them is the Old Faithful, the Swiss Army Knife. And I think that's where I'm going to start. Um, now, a lot of people kind of look at these and dismiss them as kind of, you know, a little bit pointless. No, no, real, not really any good for anybody. Um, I would most certainly disagree. Um, I think a good Swiss Army Knife that is kept sharp is actually a really, really invaluable part of your carving toolkit. Um, and the one thing to remember, and I, I will do a, an episode maybe on carving safety, um, um, and, and sort of semi-legality, although that's not something I'd, I'd like to cover too often, um, is that this, unlike all the others, is a folding knife. It has a blade under three inches long and it's non-locking, which means you can carry this around with you for the most part, um, you know, day to day, um, nearly anywhere. You know, you can't take them into certain establishments um, and you know if you're underage etc etc but you know this is something that I keep normally in my rucksack um, pretty much all the time you know unless I'm going into a, a drinking establishment or you know a government building of some description where they're banned this will always be with me um, and it just means that I can use it for carving whenever I like. Now the blades on these are pretty good um, you know a little tiny little bit of work from your side and you can make them even better um, plus the fact that you've got a number of other things in here. Now this is the um, Victorian Ox Farmer, Swiss Army Knife Farmer, call it what you like. Um, and for me, it comes with a bottle opener and a flathead screwdriver, really, really useful. It also comes with a can opener. Um, you know, I don't often use it, but I do like having the option. Um, and a very, very small flathead screwdriver, which normally fits most Phillip heads as well. Um, you have a little saw blade on here. Now I have used this to cut branches and, and kind of quite thick sticks out in the field for making spoons and things. Um, and these are not bad little saws, especially for the size. And then you've got an awl. Um, now primarily I, I use this for my fire striker, but you can also use this for making holes in things as well. Um, and I find that personally quite useful. It just gives you a little bit of extra... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It just gives you a few extra options when you're carving. Um, and as I say, the blade on this, relatively good blade. Let me grab a little bit of off cut. So, you know, I can carve with this, no problem. What I will say, and, and I agree with a lot of people on this, is Swiss Army knives are not the most comfortable knife to use for a long period. Um, that said, I will quite happily whittle a spoon or something with this without any issue. Um, so this is always a good starter for 10. You can normally pick these up. I mean, this is a, a sort of a, you know, a metal anodized version. These are slightly more expensive. You can get the tr very traditional red plastic handled versions for, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds, something like that. Um, and I think they're really, really good value for money. Next up, I'm gonna move these two out of the way for a second. Let's have a look at these. These are the sort of the, the bushcraft carving crossovers that I was talking about. Now, most of you will be familiar with this. Um, perhaps you're not. Maybe if you are really, really new to carving and bushcraft, you won't be. So this is a Mora Clipper, um, otherwise known as a Mora Companion. It is a fixed blade knife, comes with a, with a pl ABS plastic sheath, rubberized handle, um, and it has what's known as a Scandinavian grind. That means that you've got a bevel down here on the front, um, on, on both sides in fact, 
um, that comes down to a very acute point if you look at it in the cross section. Um, they're very, very easy to keep sharp, um, especially out in the field, um, and they give, in my opinion, probably the sharpest and finest cutting edge that you will get on a wood carving knife. And you can see I'm really putting no pressure on here and I'm making some really, really fine shavings. Let me get those a bit closer up for you so you can see those. You know, really fine shavings. And I've been using these for years. Now the benefit I find with this is you can no normally pick up a Mora Clipper or Mora Companion for maybe 15 pounds, 20 online delivered, something like that. Now these are brilliant, brilliant bushcraft knives. They're also really, really good carving knives and that's why a lot of people sort of use them for both. So that is kind of your jack of all trades. It works really, really well. And you're, what you'll notice, for, for those of you in the know, apart from the Swiss Army knife, these are all Mora knives. Um, and there's a reason for that that I'll come on to later. Um, so Mora Clipper, you, you really can't go wrong with these. You know, I highly, highly recommend them for both bushcraft and carving. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Um, why you wouldn't buy one as a newcomer, I, I just can't understand why you wouldn't. So this this would probably be one of my first choices, especially if you're into your bushcraft as well as uh, wanting to try carving. Now the next one, and I'm going to really skim over this one. This is the... Mora Eldris. I got this a little while ago. It's a lovely little knife. Um, carves just as well. Really, really fine shavings on there. Or you can put a bit of power in and you can get some nice big thick cuts out of it. Um, the only issue with this one, and, and it's not really that much of an issue, is it's got a very small blade to it. Um, so you are slightly restricted if you're trying to re remove a lot of material quickly. But actually, you know, as a little neck knife, comes in a lovely little sheath. You know, you can hang this, you can't really see me, but you can hang this round your neck, or you can put it on your belt, which, whichever you prefer. Um, and you know, I think they're nice little knives. It's the most expensive of the lot here. I think these are about 35, 40 pounds at the moment online. Um, and you know, if you're willing to pay that sort of money, great. Um, personally, if it were me, I would go with the clipper. Um, that's just my opinion. And then the last two, which I really want to have a quick look at with you, these are, as I say, what I class as dedicated carving knives. They are designed exclusively for carving. Now, obviously, you can use them for other things. It's a bladed tool at the end of the day. You know, you can use it for food preparation. You can use it for some, some basic camp or bushcraft tasks. But what they're designed for and what they excel at is wood carving. Now, these are really just two variations of the same thing. Um, this one here is a more, uh, let me get this right in my head, it's a 120, I think. Uh, let me check. No, sorry, it's the 10, slightly longer blade, it's the 106. Um, this is, beyond a shadow of a doubt, my favorite carving knife. Um, I've had several of these over the years, a couple of them I've broken because I'm an idiot and I was using them in a way that I probably shouldn't have done, and I've snapped off tips, or I've left them outside in workshops you know, where they've been damp and they've got rusty. I mean, yeah, they're perfectly salvageable. They're a carbon steel, uh, which makes them easier to work with, easier to get an edge on. They do blunt slightly quicker than stainless, but they're a lot easier to keep sharp if that does happen. Um, and you know, these are, wonderful wonderful little carvers you know they will carve just as well in fact in my opinion better than the clipper um, and one of the benefits of this small thin blade is that you can get some really tight turns on there you can get some real detail cuts in I mean, I'm not doing much on this piece of wood here but you know you can you can really use that point and get in there even down on the belly of the blade up here you know, you can get in tight and you can get some real detailed, intricate cuts in there. Um, and that's the benefit, I think, of this. Now, this one with the wooden handle, I think you can get these for about 18, maybe 20 pounds online. Um, really, really nice. You know, I, I can't rate them highly enough. And as for a beginner into something like wood carving, you know, if this is, if you're on a budget or you don't want to spend too much because you don't know whether you're going to get into it or not, 20 pounds, you know, for a knife that will do 
absolutely everything a more expensive or custom knife would do this is in my opinion definitely the way to go um, and if you're not interested in bushcraft or you're already into it and you're already doing you've already got your own knives and things for bushcraft then you know this I think is the way to go and then lastly just very very quickly and you would have seen my recent videos on this if you watch my channel um, this is the Mora Basics carving knife um, and basically, it's the same as the one I've just shown you. It's got, a, except it's got a, a, an ABS plastic handle. Um, some people will like this. Some people will prefer this wooden version. It's really down to personal preference. Um, now, I only recently discovered these, and this knife cost less than twelve pounds delivered online. Um, so if this is something you're looking to try out and you want to see whether you're going to get into it and you don't want to spend a lot of money, you don't want to waste any money in case you end up either not liking it or not continuing or carrying on with, with wood carving, you know, £12 delivered I think is about the cheapest you're going to get. I mean, some people will advocate the use of, of household knives, kitchen knives, um, you know, kind of workman's knives, that kind of thing. And absolutely, you can carve with them. And I won't say that you can't, but if you want to try doing it with something that's designed for the job, um, and personally, that, that's how I like to do things, this is probably the best value for money wood carving knife on the market that I have been able to find. There are other brands than Mora. You've got um, Holterfors is another very popular brand um, and they're very similarly priced to Mora. Um, personally, I've always used Mora and I just prefer them. That, that is a personal preference thing. And I don't think you will find a Holterfors knife cheaper than, a, than this particular Mora basic carving knife. Um, so those are the five knives that I personally think are the ones that you should be looking at if you want to get into wood carving. Those are the options I think that are really good for beginners. Um, and again, it's just my personal preference, but hopefully with the benefit of hindsight and the fact that I do quite a bit of wood carving now, um, you know, these are the ones that really kind of sell it for me. Right then guys, well I hope that was useful. Um, that is just my take on uh, choosing a beginner's carving knife. Um, really the things to take away from this, apart from the Swiss Army knife, which I still think are great little knives for what they are, I wouldn't want to use one exclusively. Um, that's just my opinion. But for the rest of them, what I would be looking for is a relatively small blade. You know, the, the clipper is great if you want a kind of a, a, an all-purpose knife if you're doing bushcraft as well. But failing that, you want a relatively small blade. Um, in my opinion, you want a Scandinavian grind. You know, secondary bevels, you, you can carve with them. I just don't find they carve as well. And I don't really think you're going to find a decent knife with a secondary bevel that you're going to be able to carve with for much cheaper or, or any cheaper at all than what you'll get from one of these ones. Um, so these are my recommendations if you're looking to get into wood carving that's what I would be looking at. So I hope it's been useful guys. Um, comments and questions in the box below. Anything you want me to cover during this series please do shout out and leave me a comment. I'd, I'd rather sort of focus my um, you know these videos on what you want to see and what will be helpful to you um, and that's it so I hope you'll all join me next time. Cheers guys.